problem number 57, we'd like to evaluate the limit. Limit as theta goes to pi over 2 from the left of tangent of theta raised to the power cosine of theta. So the very first thing I want to do is, again, let's just figure out what kind of indeterminate form we're dealing with here. Uh, so if I go ahead and I plug in the pi over 2, well, uh, tangent of pi over 2, we, we know is kind of like an infinity. And cosine of pi over 2 is kind of like a 0. So we've kind of got an infinity raised to the zero power. And uh, that doesn't make a lot of sense either because we've kind of got something, when infinity is raised to a power, typically we get infinity. But when anything is raised to the zero power, we typically get one. So is it infinity? Is it one? Is it something in between? We don't know yet. That's what we need to figure out. Okay, so let's work on this thing. And again, I have thetas. Down here in the base, I have thetas in the exponent. When I have them in both places, that's a key to me. Hey, I need to use a natural log to get these thetas out of the exponent, and that's going to be helpful to me. So I need to set this problem up uh, using a letter to represent what this limit is. So I'm going to call it L. So I'm going to say L is equal to the limit as theta goes to pi over 2 from the left of tangent theta raised to the cosine of theta. Now I can take a natural log of both sides of the equation. And if I do, I get ln of L is equal to ln of the limit as theta goes to pi over 2 from the left of tangent theta raised to the cosine of theta. So I just took the natural log of both sides of the equation. Now, uh, since ln is a continuous function, I can flip what I do first. I can move this limit outside of the natural log, again, because the natural log is a continuous function. So what I can do is I can rewrite, and I can say that ln of L is equal to the limit as theta goes to pi over 2 from the left of ln of tan theta raised to the cosine of theta. So I was able to flip the ln and the limit. Now that they're flipped, I can use the power rule for natural logs to pull this cosine of theta out in front of ln. Okay, so let's do it. So I get ln of L is equal to the limit as theta goes to pi over 2 from the left of, I move this cosine of theta out in front of ln, and I get cosine of theta times um, ln of tangent of theta. Now let's see what kind of a form I have. If I plug in the pi over 2 at this point, I get cosine of pi over 2. What is cosine of pi over 2? Uh, it is 0. So I get a form right here of 0 times, what if I plug in pi over 2 for tangent? Well, um, tangent of pi over 2, it's sine of pi over 2, which is 1, divided by cosine of pi over 2, which is like um, 0. So I get something like infinity. So this has the form 0 times infinity, uh, which is not a form on which I can use L'Hopital's rule. So what I'm going to do is I can, again, let's take this cosine of theta and let's put it on the bottom of the fraction. If I do, I get that ln of L is equal to the limit as theta goes to pi over 2 from the left of ln of tangent theta divided by cosine of theta on top is the same as 
secant of theta on the bottom. So now we are ready to take a derivative, we hope, after we check the form. So again, we know that if I plug in pi over 2 to tangent here, that I get an infinity, and ln of infinity is infinity. And on the bottom, I get secant of pi over 2, which is 1 over cosine of pi over 2. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so 1 over 0 is like infinity. So we're in the perfect form now for L'Hopital's rule. So let's use L'Hopital's rule, and I get that ln of L is equal to the limit as theta goes to pi over 2 from the left of the derivative of ln of tangent of theta is the derivative of tan theta over tangent of theta. So it's secant squared of theta divided by tangent of theta. The derivative of secant of theta is secant of theta times tangent of theta. So this is secant theta times tangent theta. Uh, if you would like, I could say over 1. So now I can flip and multiply that to write it in a little bit better form. And I get this is the limit as theta goes to pi over 2 from the left of, on top, I'm going to have secant squared of theta. And on bottom, this stuff all goes to the bottom when it's flipped and multiplied. So I have a secant of theta times tangent squared theta. Obviously, a secant of theta cancels. And let's rewrite. So I get ln of L is equal to the limit as theta goes to pi over 2 from the left of, on top, I have secant of theta. On bottom, I have tangent squared of theta. OK, let's see now what happens if I plug in pi over 2. Well, if I plug in pi over 2 to the top into secant theta, um, then I would get 1 over cosine of pi over 2, which is like infinity. What about if I plugged it into tangent of theta? I get sine over cosine. That's sort of like infinity. So I have another situation where it's infinity over infinity. But it's possible that I might be able to simplify this a thing a little bit more by turning it into sines and cosines. So let's do it. This is equal to the limit as theta goes to pi over 2 from the left of what is secant of theta? It's 1 over cosine. So this is 1 over cosine of theta. Uh, and what is tangent of theta? It is sine of theta over cosine. But flip and multiply that, and it's cosine squared of theta over sine squared. And so one of those cosines cancels, and I'm left with that ln of L is equal to the limit as theta goes to pi over 2 from the left of, on top I have a cosine of theta, and on bottom I have a sine squared of theta. All right, so what do I get here? If I plug in pi over 2 to cosine of theta, we already know that gives me 0. On the bottom, if I plug in pi over 2 to sine of theta, I get 1 squared, which is 1. So I get 0 over 1, which is 0. And I end up with ln of L is equal to 0. I'm not looking for the natural log of L. I'm looking for L. So if ln of L is 0, I get that. L is equal to e to the 0, or uh, that L equals 1. So the answer to this problem is the limit that I'm looking for is 1.